Welcome into the Big East Women's Basketball Update. I'm Megan Caffrey. What a week it has been for Big East Women's Hoops. Three teams are receiving recognition in the latest national polls. Marquette, DePaul, and the Butler Bulldogs are receiving votes for the second straight week. The Marquette Golden Eagles are leading the pack, coming in at number 14 in this week's rankings. That is not only a program record for the Golden Eagles, it's also the highest ranking by any Big East team since conference reconfiguration. I think the really interesting thing here is that you look at the success that the Golden Eagles are having without Big East preseason player of the year, Alizea Blockton. She has been out the last four games with an injury, and it is next man up mentality for the Golden Eagles. That next man up has been Natisha Heideman. Get this, Natisha has averaged 15.4 points per game, and now she is averaging 17.8 points per game since Blockton's injury. She now leads the league in scoring and the DePaul Blue Demons are back in the national polls after a week of absence from last week and DePaul is usually getting off to a really hot start in conference play they're sitting at three and two in league action right now and it's a little bit of a different mindset for the for the Blue Demons this season I sat down with forward Marte Grays about the new identity that this Blue Demons team is creating for themselves We now welcome in DePaul forward, Hi. Marte Grays. Marte, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Your team trailed in your game against Villanova on Sunday until your three-pointer forced overtime. You then outscored the Wildcats 11-4 to to win it. What was the difference offensively for your team in overtime? Offensively, we had a um, lot of juice, a lot of, um, a lot of motivation to get the win that night. Um, we just did, we didn't do much more than just execute our offense. That's all that was. It was nothing special about anything else over time, but just execution. We did a real good job of executing our offense. You also had a come from behind victory on Friday against Georgetown. Back to back, come from behind wins. What did that teach you about your team? Um, That we have a fight in us that we can just, if we can carry on throughout the um, season of regular season conference, we can, we can pull off and be a lot of great teams in this league. Um, we just have to start from the start, getting off to a quick and efficient start. So I, if we can come back um, and win against a great team like Georgetown, then we can do that against any team in the Big East. Who is the most vocal motivator on the team? Um, I have to say Ashton Millinder. Like she brings the um, energy offensively and defensively, especially defensively. She, she gets to, our, to us and gets in our heads and have us going. After the game on Sunday, head coach Doug Bruno said, your team is still really trying to find yourselves. What is the identity that you hope at the end of this Big East season you have created? Um, we just want to be a team, um, one, of, one of the past best um, teams, you know, 2019, 18 and 19 team. We just want to establish roles and do what we do best, really. Um, so. Nothing, it's really nothing more to it than that. What is it that you do best? Um, well, me personally, um, post up, <laughs> you know, just um, and help my team, of course, like defensively or stuff like that. That's what I do best personally, but our team, we shoot the three well, and um, you know, we look for each other, we assist pretty well too. You are majoring in sociology, Martez, with a concentration in criminology. Once you're in season, how is it balancing the academic schedule with all of the basketball that is going on? Um, sometimes it can get a little rough or a little hard, but um, lately it's been real smooth. This is my last year. I'm only taking one class right now, and I'm, I'm pretty focused and locked in. Um, academically and on the court right now. So I think that's um, positive for me. Your team is home this weekend. What are some of the home rituals that you guys have pregame? Oh, uh, you know, they are different, but um, we just like, since it's home, like we just like to chill. You know, we live literally right across the street from the gym. So we don't, you know, we just chill and stuff until it's time for game time. Like people, People's pregame rituals are so different than um, others on the team. What's your pregame ritual? 
I personally like to stay up and, you know, do my hair, put a little ma mascara on. <laughs> and I just, I stay up the whole time because I'm so anxious all the time. Will this hair do be what we're going to see this weekend? I don't know. Should it be? I love it. Yeah. Okay, well, it is. <laughs> It brings a little something. I love it. Marte, thank you so much for joining me, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I now get the chance to welcome in my partner in crime, John Fanta. I've been without him for the past two weeks. Welcome back, partner. It's good to be back, partner. <laughs> really good to be back as the conference grind has fired up. So many intriguing storylines across this conference. Let's start now with DePaul. We, we heard Marte say it right there. They are a different DePaul team than in years past. What have you seen from the Blue Demons this season? What I've seen is some of the similarities of DePaul ball, and that is 11.8 threes per game. So they still shoot the trifecta. That is who DePaul always has been. That's Doug Bruno's philosophy. For his team, they'll be looking to shoot the ball better because they're in the lower 30s percentage-wise from three, so you want to make sure that you're doing it efficiently. But for me, it's a balanced approach. It could be anybody on any given day, whether it's Marte Grace, whether it's Shante Stonewall, uh, Millinder. I think the key for DePaul is Kelly Campbell, if she can shoot the ball better, which there's a lot of season to do that, watch out for her to maybe take that step and be able to drive this team because Campbell has had that in her in the past. But what stands out to me is they trailed by 13 at halftime mm -hmm. in D.C. And Marte Gray's 22nd half points, 22 points in just 19 minutes on mm -hmm. the court. That is a byproduct of DePaul ball. That's exactly what that is. That is so true. And you can, you can see it when you're just watching. They have this different little fight that kind of comes out in them. Absolutely. And Marte Grace and Shante Stonewall at six foot one, six foot two, the size causes some problems for teams to guard them. We know DePaul for their guard play, and they have solid guard play, but it's the size there that I think makes a difference, Megan. Let's take a look now at the Creighton Blue Jays. They are 3-3 three and three in conference play. Most recently, they're coming off of a win against St. John's on Sunday. A really exciting win for the Blue Jays. And one of the standouts that has been for this Creighton team this season has been Audrey Faber. She was leading the league in scoring before Marquette's Natisha Heideman took over. Audrey Faber is such a versatile player. Swiss Army knife of, of sorts because you can go inside to Faber and she can post you up. What you have to do is you have to make it hard for her to catch the ball. Once she catches it that deep, she's going to get it done. And Creighton, you see their hot shooting. That's what the Blue Jays can do. They shoot 44% from the field on average. And in the fourth quarter against St. John's on Sunday, Creighton hit 10 of its final 13 shots. Once they hit one or two, they can get cooking. Faber with the rip move inside, that's what Audrey can do. She can stretch you out from deep but it's so difficult to guard Audrey Faber, mm -hmm. a seasoned player that under Jim Flannery has continued to evolve throughout her career. Now, the Creighton Blue Jays will face Butler this coming weekend on Sunday Huge after matchup. both have Friday games. What is the most intriguing thing to you about that matchup on Sunday? Butler's defensive capabilities, mm -hmm. they have really taken a great stride on defense. The dogs are getting stops, get this. They are holding teams to just 34% from the field and just 26% from three. That's right. Butler is holding teams to just 26% from three. So what sticks out to me is Butler's perimeter defense taking on a Creighton team that can hurt you from the perimeter offensively and that can really get going at home. This is Butler's toughest test in conference play, in my opinion, and if they can get it done, they're going to be ranked on Monday. That's what mm -hmm. a win like this would say to me. This is a great matchup, though. And for me, it's Michelle Weaver mm -hmm. is Butler's best defender. Look for her to be on a Jalen Agnew at times or maybe a Temi Sarda. Creighton's got to find complementary scoring to favor to win this game. But Butler defends you really well. Those dogs are tough. They most certainly are, and I think the interesting thing, too, is Butler was chosen to finish seventh in the preseason coaches' polls, and I remember speaking with Whitney Jennings, and she said this is just a totally different Butler team than we've seen in years past. What they did in the offseason, Megan, is they had mm -hmm. team meetings and a complete philosophy change. Kurt Godlewski 
ripped out the pages from his defensive playbook. He went around the country to other schools to scout what other coaches were doing. And what Butler tries to do to you defensively is they provide a lot of weak side help, but they also are not letting teams in the middle. Previously, they let mm -hmm. you get taught, mm -hmm. give them the middle because we'll help. You, you'll find help. What Butler's saying is we're not letting teams in the middle. <laughs> we're forcing them to the corner. And it's worked really, really well. I'm impressed by the ability of this team to evolve, especially Tori Schickel. Mm -hmm. She got back at it, Megan. She was already a good player. She went to a nutritionist. She's conditioned. She's playing the best basketball of her career, and that's why this is such a great story. You know what else is working really well? The new offense that Seton Hall has put into play Ooh. this season. The Big East Player of the Week comes from the Pirates this week, Shadeen Samuels. She's averaging 25.5 points per game, 10.5 <laughs> rebounds and four assists in the Pirates' two wins this weekend. She's just elevating her game, John. Shadeen Samuels is the definition of a matchup nightmare. And she is the lead candidate for Big East Women's Basketball Most Improved Player by far. 7.5 points per game and 6.5 boards to this year, 17 and 9. Close to a double-double for Samuels. And when you look at the juniors, she can affect the game in so many ways. When she drives and scores, she can also drive, draw attention, and be able to dish it out. Shadeen Samuels is a direct result of what Tony Bazell and his staff can do in developing players. We are seeing it with Samuels, and she has really become one of the most fun, the most talented players in the conference. John, you were able to call games with her last year, and you've seen her already this season as well. When you look at her physically, what has changed the most? She's definitely built mm -hmm. with her frame. Uh, I'm seeing her assert herself more than anything. Mm -hmm. Part of it is Tony Bazella is very vocal we know that mm -hmm. and he's very vocal <laughs> in letting her know that she's got to be the a playmaker for this Seton Hall team but Shadeen's attitude change started from freshman to sophomore year freshman year she was trying to get a feel for it she could get down starting in sophomore year every time you saw her she was smiling so this is a player who's really had a great personality change she's evolving and man I'll tell you what Megan Big East most improved player and beyond. This is a player who's going to garner some accolades because of what she can do as a stretch forward. It's going to be really interesting to see how Shadeen does this weekend against mm. when Seton Hall takes on Marquette. They, we can take a look at the upcoming schedule for this weekend. It'll be interesting to see Shadeen up against Natisha Heideman from Marquette. I think that will be a really interesting matchup. Two legit scores for Seton Hall, the tough thing is you want to run if you're Tony Bazella, but Marquette, they can run just as well, if not better. They, they can certainly run with anybody in the country. So how do you fit into a game like that? I have my eyes on Villanova Georgetown, two teams who have showed us what they're capable of, but they play completely contrasting styles. Which guard rules in that one? Deanna White from Georgetown? Hoyas coming off a really good performance against Marquette. They lost, but I, I saw better things from them. Or Adriana Hahn in the backcourt can get hot. And then Sunday, 3 Eastern time, FS1. It's must-see, everybody. Must-see women's basketball. Butler and Creighton in Omaha. Jay Alter and Kim Adams will have it. Should be a blast. That is going to be a really that, – that game, like you said a little bit earlier, that is going to be such a, a pivotal game in both of those teams' schedules to see who can kind of dig in the most and come out with the win. Well, it bears noting that this Butler women's basketball program, they joined Division I in the mid-'80s. So they have never been 15-1 and one mm. in, in the history of the program in Division I. The last time – that the dogs started the season this well. The year was 1981-82. So what this team's doing, what Kirk Gottlewski's doing is special. And it must be so much fun to be a part of a team that's making history. That just keeps your momentum going, and it's, you're having fun playing. They're having an absolute <laughs> ball. They've got the veterans. This is a group that's stuck together. Mm -hmm. uh, they had combined for just 12, just 12 wins in their first three years. Just 12 wins. And, and you look at what they're doing now, it really is something what these dogs have put together. Well, you can check out the dogs on Sunday at 3 o'clock on FS1 up against Creighton. All the other Big East women's basketball games, you can tune into the Big East Digital Network on your Fox Sports app to check those out. Thank you so much for joining myself, Megan Caffrey, and my partner, John Fanta. I was so happy to have you back this week. Great to be back <laughs> with you, and we're only getting started in Big East women's hoops play.
Keep on rolling. Thanks for tuning in.